During the Crossroads of Destiny episode, we saw Azula take over Ba Sing Se, but the moments that shocked fans the most was Aang getting defeated and Zuko's betrayal. Now this video is going to discuss every major event that happened between the end of book 2 and the beginning of book 3. And we gotta start off with Zuko since his events take place right after the finale. As you can see right here, Iroh is sitting in his cell, he's got the same disappointed look that he had at the end of the finale, and the guards right here don't seem to understand why Iroh has been labeled a traitor. He's obviously part of the royal family, one of these guards actually served under him, so it's a little confusing. And Zuko overhears this conversation and you can tell he feels guilty. He has a sad look on his face, but he gets very angry at the guards, tells them to stop, and then walks away. And we see he enters the throne room, and when he arrives, there's actually a surprised guest for us readers. This is Judy. She once again returned. Azula has put her in charge of Ba Sing Se. She has been given the title Supreme Bureaucratic Administrator and she's going to be taking orders directly from Fire Lord Ozai without question. And this makes sense since she's obviously been brainwashed. And the reason Azula did this is because obviously as we know, everybody went back home to the Fire Nation. So this is just Azula's preparations for them to leave. Now she wants Zuko to obviously come back home. He helped her claim Ba Sing Se. He gets the credit for taking down the Avatar. So obviously Ozai would welcome him back with open arms. But Zuko isn't sure about this. He doesn't want to come back. He's denying it. So Azula has to come up with a plan to to convince him to come back. And this is where Tai Lee comes in. Azula walks into her room, tells her that they have to get Mei and Zuko to go on a date. So later that night, with the help of the Dai Li, they set up a dinner table and they quickly hide behind a bush. Zuko and Mei then arrive because they assume that this is a dinner to meet with an admiral who's coming. But this all turned out to be a setup. And they figured this out when the Dai Li was playing songs while Mei and Zuko were trying to eat. They get very annoyed and Zuko calls out Azula because he realizes they're hiding in the bush. Azula then tries to deflect the blame to Tai Li, but Mei and Zuko decide to leave and roam the city. While they do that, they talk about the food, just random conversation, but Zuko gets stopped. And guess what is said? Lee. This is Jin. She returns as well, just like Judy. And Zuko explains to Jin how him and his friend Mei are from the circus. And Mei, wanting to get some good old revenge on Zuko for what happened in Zuko alone, decides to demonstrate to Jin with her knife throwing skills. Jin then makes a funny comment saying, saying, let's hope she's better at throwing than you are at juggling, obviously referencing the tales of Ba Sing Se. But Mei and Jin at the end decide to team up with ice knives, throw them at Zuko so that he'll fall in the fountain similar to obviously the Zuko alone episode. Seconds later we see Zuko and Mei run off to share a scene together, they seem very happy to be in each other's presence and begin their relationship with a kiss. The following day, it's time for Team Azula to return home. You can actually see Iroh and Chains being transferred in the background while Zuko does decide to go with them since May asked. And the following scene is obviously what we saw in episode 1 of season 3. But let's change our focus from Team Azula to Team Avatar. And we're going to specifically focus on the Earth King and his bear Bosco. Now we got to start off with Toph and Sokka. They're walking to their tents explaining how interesting Bosco is due to how he eats. And as Sokka walks into his tent, Bosco is sleeping inside, which is really funny. Sokka gets annoyed because the Earth King explains that Bosco loves to be cozy and under a roof so all three of them actually have to sleep together in this tent. The next morning, Sokka decides that he will help the Earth King teach Bosco how to be a real bear. No books required at all. Now they start with hunting for food, bees to be specific, and Sokka tells them to be careful, but unfortunately this lesson is off to a bumpy start, as Bosco can't climb the tree. They then decide to move on to fishing, but Bosco holds the fishing rod just like any other person. They then try to cover shelter, but Sokka gets chased out of the cave, Next up they try territory and Bosco doesn't roar, he whistles which is another fail. And lastly they try self defense but he takes Sokka's punch. Now all this is considered a waste of time at least for Bosco because the Earth King actually learned a valuable lesson in all this and it's that he knows nothing about the world and he wants to go out and explore. So as we see in the next comic that we're going to go over and also in episode 1 of book 3 they do go out and travel. But let me ask you all a question, what do you think of King Sokka? Sokka? Let me know down below. But some time goes by and we're now focusing on Katara healing Aang. We get a quick recap of what happened from Katara. We see she's doubting herself and her skills as a healer because it just feels like nothing's working. She doesn't know why Aang isn't waking up, but we will get the answers to that in the next story a little bit later. Seeing this really makes you understand why she was so angry at Zuko in the Western Air Temple episode. But as we continue on, everybody gathers up concerned about a Fire Nation scout ship that was coming and they are definitely not 
not in a position to fight. So Sokka comes up with a fantastic idea to switch ships with the Fire Nation. And in order to achieve this, they have to flood their own boats to make it look like they've been defeated. Now this plan worked because the next morning the Fire Nation came across these ships and they assumed that they had been defeated. So they relaxed thinking that they could take the credit. But they were so wrong as during the night, the gang rushed to take over the ship. Katara did feel bad at first leaving Aang behind but decided to go with them because if this works, Aang will have a safe spot to recover. And luckily this crew was very easy to defeat and thanks to Katara's water bending, stink bombs and straight up fighting, the boat napping plan worked. They left the Fire Nation soldiers behind, took their clothes and put their new disguises to the test by entering Fire Nation territory. Hakoda told the soldier that the water tribe was taken out and they have to return to the rendezvous point. They believed him but before letting him go, they gave valuable information and they explained that the avatar had been killed at Ba Sing Se. Everybody was sad about this except Sokka because as we saw in episode 1 of book 3, the whole world thinks he's dead so that gives them an advantage. But the crazy experiences they've had these past few days gave Katara enough confidence that anything is possible and that the avatar would return and things would be alright. So those first three stories we went over are from the Lost Adventures book but the final one is actually from an online game back in the day and it involves Aang being trapped in the spirit world. We start off with Yue showing up again and explaining how the avatar spirit is in danger. All of us fans knew Aang was near death but this lost episode really proves he was closer to it than we thought. But Aang has to meet all of his previous avatars to reconnect with them. Now obviously we're gonna go in order so we gotta start off with Roku and it's shown that Aang feels like he's failed at mastering the avatar state but Roku reassures him and shows him a flashback from his past where he got impatient with endlessly failing at the avatar state as well. So in order to enter it he used energy from the sun and similar to what happened in the avatar state episode with General Fong, Roku got trapped and the fire stage that was training Roku had to break him out. So this was a great lesson for Aang to learn and he then had to travel to the forest where he met Heibai and Heibai took him to meet Avatar Kyoshi. Now this story is probably the most interesting one in the episode as she explains a conflict in Ba Sing Se. We have the Earth Kingdom citizens right here who feel the current king isn't meeting their needs and decide to storm the upper ring. So Kyoshi has to step in to create a compromise but unfortunately it wasn't that easy since the Earth King initially tried to arrest Kyoshi but obviously that didn't work so a compromise was made where she would protect Ba Sing Se's cultural heritage if the king would listen to the citizens concerns. Then Kyoshi formed and trained the Dai Li to bring order to the city and basically Kyoshi's lesson here is that sometimes positive acts can have negative consequences even if it's hundreds of years later and this is because the Dai Li were acting very suspicious brainwashing citizens working on their long fang but after this Aang went to meet Avatar Kurok. This story has to do with his early years and the fact that he was very arrogant he would challenge other benders and try to impress other girls at least until he found Umi who was his future wife and they were set to get married at the spirit oasis but before this happened Ko the face stealer took her and Kurok endlessly searched for her in the spirit world and failed but thanks to Aang he told him that Ko still has her. After this we lastly meet Avatar Yang Chin who doesn't have a story here we obviously get that in the novels way later but she explains to Aang why it's important for avatars to incarnate as a human that they need to feel joy sadness happiness and form close connections with others and that's what grounds the avatar obviously Aang's body's still severely injured as we've seen in the finale and in the previous stories but his spirit is now recovered Yang Chin does tell Aang that his memory will be wiped and he will not remember this so this story is canon but none of the characters remember this at all and we could assume in the open of book three that a lot did happen over those few weeks but to now actually see it a lot really did happen but what was your favorite story i want you to let me know down below and if you want to learn more about deleted scenes you should check out what happened after zuko got burned